Welcome to Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and to our podcast for Proper 24. This week's text is taken from the Gospel of Luke, the 18th chapter, beginning with the first verse, chapter 18 of Luke, verses 1 through 8. And it's a typical and delightful uh, Lucan story. The one thing you can say about Luke, and I guess you can say this about our Lord as well, he was a great storyteller. And the stories in Luke are different than the parables, let's say, in Matthew. For one, they tend to focus on discipleship. We can say that everything in the scriptures is about Christ, yet Luke particularly focuses on the Christian life and what it means to be a disciple. And he's also a great uh, teller of stories in the fact that he is able to draw for us really um, very interesting characters, the kind that uh, we see in real life, the kind that we see all the time and that we can relate to. And he uses these kind of characters to show for us what the Christian life is all about. And so it is today in the parable of the persistent widow. And we have two great characters, the widow as well as this judge who, uh, I guess like the honey badger, he just doesn't care. And yet he still does what's right simply because it's beneficial for him. Well, um, we, we actually are told at the beginning of the parable what it's all about. And Luke tells us. So he spoke to us a parable. This is not going to be a, a parable like the sower of the seeds. It's a real kind of story. He tells us a, a parable or a story that it is necessary always to pray and never to... Well, this is like to lose heart, to despair, to give up. Um, when you think about prayer, uh, Matthew teaches us, the disciples say, Lord, teach us to pray. And our Lord gives them the, the Lord's Prayer. And that's the first step in praying is that you actually give somebody a prayer to pray. And written prayers are excellent. It's so wonderful that we have the Lord's Prayer because now there are actually words on our lips that have been implanted into our hearts that we might confess this prayer and speak this prayer in words given to us by Jesus himself to God our Father. But then we have to ask ourselves, um, will the Lord listen? Will those prayers matter? Sometimes when you're praying, it seems like it doesn't make any difference at all that you're praying and you wonder, is God listening? And then you also wonder, should I bother to keep praying? Well, this is a parable or a story about persistence. Uh, God invites us to be persistent in our prayer. And it is necessary always to pray. To, as we say, pray without ceasing. And he explains it in this way. It's a very human story, and that's what makes it such a wonderful story. Well, there's a certain judge. So... There's a certain judge, and uh, it was in a certain town, so it could be anywhere. It could be a judge or a magistrate or somebody that you know. And what kind of a person was this? Now, he's not an evil judge. He's just one that is apathetic. He doesn't, he doesn't care. Um, he's, he, he's probably living for himself, not in a hedonistic way, but he's doing his job, and he doesn't want trouble. Well, this, jo this judge in a certain town, what kind of a guy is he? Well, he doesn't fear God, so he's not, he's not worried about his eternal soul. He's not going to church. He's not uh, concerned about Judgment Day, that sort of thing, of being righteous, the Ten Commandments, doing good. That's not his thing. So he doesn't fear God, and really, actually, he doesn't respect or give heed also to man. So um, he's not a person who also then cares about his neighbor. Well, um, now, so that's, that's the judge that we're dealing with. On the other side of the equation, there is a Kara. There is a widow who was in that city. And she came to him, Erkato. She came towards him saying... And I love this because this is a universal story. Do justice by me from my adversary. So what she's saying is, 
She wants justice. She wants things to be made right. And um, so, so do, here's the word is justice twice. Do justice dikason against the one who is anti diku me, against the one who is uh, my adversary. <coughs> now this is the kind of story you can imagine. I always say that um, if you're in the hospital, for instance, and um, uh, it's easy to get lost in the hospital system, what you really need is a wife or a mother or a woman who will then take your case to the doctors, to the administration, to the insurance, because they will speak. You know, we as men oftentimes, I think by nature we're often diplomatic, so we try to smooth things over. But um, women often are, they, they want to say that things w must be right, and they will make it so, and they will be persistent. Uh, you might also think, for instance, about um, another scene like this, is let's say you buy a product, uh, electronic product, clothes, and, you, and I, I, you see women, for instance, especially, I mean, men can do it too, but they return their clothes or their products at the, at the store, and they say, I want my money back. And, well, I'm sorry, our policy, no, the product isn't good. I want my money back. Well, actually, the, you have 30 days to return it, you see, and now you're 35 days, so according to the rules of the store, um, that is now yours. And the, what does the woman say? She says, no, you gave me this product, and it is faulty, and I want my money back. Well, what will happen? Well, if the guy at the store counter or the return, the return whatever the return policy is, you just say, get this person off my back because I don't want to have to deal with this. Persistence does pay off. The squeaky, uh, what, what, the, uh, the squeaky uh, hinge gets the oil sort of thing. That's true in all of life. That um, th Whether it's the complaint department, whether it's going to the judge, it makes a difference if you are persistent. And this woman is persistent. <coughs> she is a person who will always... Uh, pray or at, or petition. Now, um, what's going on in the mind of the judge? Um, well, it says in verse 4, it says, and um, he did not want to, but then I love this, for a time. I mean, <coughs> you, can, you can listen to her. She's asking for justice. And he says, no, no, no. But it's only for a time because He's tired of having to put up with this request. So after these things, he said to himself, so sometimes we don't think, for instance, it's said in the ancient world that there's no such thing as psychology. That's nonsense. Um, this guy is thinking inside of himself, like, what am I going to do in this situation? And he knows himself, and he doesn't claim to be righteous in any way. Um, so what, but what is he says, <coughs> if I indeed, I don't fear God, if I, neither, if I do not fear God, nor do I respect man. So if I do anything for this woman, it's not because I care about her. It's not because her case is right. It's not because God will judge me if I don't do right by the widow. I mean, the scriptures say do right by right, widows and orphans. That's the right thing to do. Well, that's not going on in the mind of this judge. Now, if we can bring verse 5 up a little, it says, um, yet if she keeps coming to me, um, this is going to be a burden upon me. So it's, she's going to be, bring me trouble or a burden, this widow is. <coughs> Therefore, I will... I will, really what we're saying is, I will do right by her. Um, and again, not because um, it's the right thing to do, but uh, simply because it's better for me. So that in the end, in coming, she does not beat me down. And this, this becomes a bit uh, tiresome. It wears me down. She'll be wearing me down. So I might as well simply give her what she wants. 
And now this is a very human story. It works in a human way, even with a judge who simply doesn't care. And so the Lord said, um, <coughs> what can we learn from this? Hear then what the judge of unrighteousness says. And this, the judge of unrighteousness doesn't mean he's an evil judge. It just means he's a worldly judge. He is not the righteous judge. Um, so when you look at what the unrighteous judge says, well then how about, how then shall we approach God with, with our petitions? And, um, and so, so he says, will not God then therefore do uh, justice? So we cry out for justice for his elect. Um, for those who cry out, now this is great, night and day, uh, day and night, and he then will have makrothumea, he will indeed have mercy upon them, he will listen to their cry, his heart will be moved, um, and he will, not, he will not delay over them. Now, <coughs> this is a picture of the church. The church is in constant and fervent prayer. And this is so important because sometimes we think that our prayers don't matter. Other times we think that God is not listening. So the story is, if an unrighteous judge, a judge of this world, will be worn down by our persistence, how much more will our Lord listen to our cries, considering that our Lord, in fact, is both righteous and he is also gracious. He cares for us. Therefore, bring your petitions. These are the petitions of the saints in heaven as they cry out forever, How long, O Lord? Come, Lord Jesus. These are the petitions of God's people in the face of injustice. Lord, end this scourge of abortion. Lord, bring justice to the unborn. Have mercy upon them. And don't think that your prayers don't matter. Remember, we just learned a few Sundays ago that uh, the faith of a mustard, mustard seed can uproot a mulberry tree, roots and all, and throw it into the sea. How much more can our Lord do for us? So never tire. Be persistent in your prayer because our Lord wants to come. Our Lord wants you. He, he enjoys your petitions. Unlike that judge, he actually enjoys us coming to him with our requests, and he loves to give to his people um, according to their desires in Christ, as we pray according to his will. <coughs> and I, again, I say, he will do justice and toxic. Now this is pretty remarkable. In speed or quickly, he will do justice. And this is the way life works, you know. Um, you might think of our life as a tug of a war in which we go back and forth on an issue. Maybe it was slavery uh, in the 19th century. You go back and forth, back and forth, and you think things will never change. And yet Christians pray that it might end. But then uh, in the tug of war, oftentimes, well, well, it always happens this way, that when the one side gets the advantage, the rope just goes quickly. And that's the way it is in life so often, is that things go back and forth, back and forth, and then comes the decisive victory. It was the same way when the Berlin Wall fell down and communism fell. People prayed that the evil regime of the atheist communists and their persecution of Christians would come to an end. Nobody believed it could happen. But then in the blink of an eye, the Berlin Wall fell and the whole thing crumbled. And so it is with all evils that we pray against. God can and will bring justice. And so also will it be when Christ comes in the end. We will pray, come Lord Jesus, come Lord Jesus, come Lord Jesus. And it may appear like, oh, he'll never come. But when he does, it'll be like in the blink of an eye. And then the skies will be filled, Christ with all of his angels. And so it is at the end. So <coughs> this is the way we're told that um, plain. Nevertheless, the Son of Man coming. <coughs> now, this is the, I suppose, this is not the exciting ending that we wanted. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find, Eureka, Eurese, 
Will he find faith upon the earth? Well, that's the question. And um, it, it does, there's no definitive answer here. I know sometimes people want to say, well, yes, of course. Um, but, you know, when you look out at the world, um, you see Christians falling. You ask that question. And I suppose it's not a question that should lead us to despair. It's a question that should make us think, you know, what it really is important in our lives, um, what matters, and as others fall away, will the Son of Man find faith on this earth? Maybe you're in a church where, uh, you know, the pews are not as full as they used to be. Maybe you're in a church where your own relatives are falling away from the faith, and maybe they've put other pursuits. Maybe they've forgotten. Maybe they're no longer in prayer because they think that they bring all goods into their life. They work for the goods which they have, their daily bread, and they don't even think about the bread that comes from heaven. Nevertheless, will the Son of Man, when he comes down, will he find faith on the earth? Well, I suppose um, that's one of the purposes why Jesus spoke these words, that these words might, in fact, instill faith in our heart and remind us that we can trust the Lord because if an unrighteous judge will give to a widow who's persistent, how much more will the Lord who loves us, who sacrificed himself for us, who indeed will come as our judge, how much more will he hear our prayers for life and salvation, for the coming of his kingdom, for the forgiveness of sins, for the good of our neighbor, so uh, take this to heart and be persistent in your prayer, knowing that in fact our Lord will answer. Thank you and um, I look forward to uh, more podcasts with you.